Hi, I'm Michelle Hill from Disrupt Ed TV, and today on Teacher Sparks, we have a very, very special guest. This is Terry Thorin. Hi, Terry. Hi, Michelle. So I'm looks so like, happy to have looks you like here. you're on the beach. Are you near the beach somewhere? Yes, I am. I'm, at, I'm on Long Beach Island in New Jersey, and it's a beautiful day here. But I really wanted to take this time to talk to you because I understand you have a very strong connection to the Rugrats. Can you tell me about it? Well, I had the good fortune um, to be the CEO of the Rugrats company. Yeah. The company is called Klasky Chupo, and I was the CEO of the company for 12 years. So I had the good fortune to work with the Rugrats and the Wild Thornberries and Rocket Power and As Told by Ginger and with incredible talent like Arlene Klasky and Gabor Chupo, who created the Rugrats. Wow, I'm, I'm very impressed because my children grew up with the Rugrats. Um, so, you know, animation is really an amazing tool for teachers. And I know that you have a new product, a new resource that is a, a really incredible for teachers. And I was hoping that you could explain to us what it is and how it can be used in the classroom. Well, you know, after spending 30 years in the animation business, um, and the funny thing is, is that 30 years ago, I created something called Animation Magazine. Um, we studied all the ways in which animation connects with um, our audience. And my sister is a special needs teacher, and she's been a special needs teacher in um, Denver, Colorado for 40 years. And um, she's retired now, and she does consulting. And she was, and 12 years ago when we began this process of using animated characters to model behavior in the classroom, we started with her classroom. And these were behaviors that we all take for granted, but for my sister's classroom, it was like a big challenge. Simple, simple things like, don't talk when the teacher's talking. Raise your hand before you speak. Line up quietly. Use your inside voice. Don't run in the classroom, right? Things. So we actually created characters and we created this world called Wonder Grove. And in Wonder Grove, we have our, our lead characters and there's like a bio of each character. So instead of having like a Rugrats episode, you know, slowly, you know, introduce you to Tommy and Chucky and Phil and Lil, we actually have these little bios where our characters look at the kids like Dora the Explorer and tell them who they are and what they like. And then the kids fall in love with the characters and then we model these behaviors so that the teacher doesn't have to say a hundred times, you know, Johnny, can you, you know, raise your hand before you speak? For me as a teacher, I can tell you, I say the same things I used to say, could I just push a record button and play button year after year, stop, top, stop tapping your pencil, or can you please wait until I call on you, or could you please wait and raise your hand? So all of those things are absolutely um, important things. And sometimes for teachers, our voice kind of gets very drony for students and they stop listening, just kind of like, you know, a, a child with his parent, they need a different voice. So that's an important factor here too, is, is that it is something bigger than life telling them what to do or asking them what to do or guiding them. Right, um, well, when you think about children in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, outside of school, research has shown that they're spending about, they have 72 hours of free time, maybe 70, you know, 70, 72 hours of free time. They're spending about 60 hours on a device. Yeah, absolutely. And in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, you see them in the grocery store, in the restaurant, every place you go, they have a monitor in front of them. They're usually watching cartoons. Yeah. Now, okay. Outside of the classroom, they're being hit with a fire hose of cartoons. And inside the classroom, there are no cartoons. So when the teacher stops for a moment, what they would typically do is they would log into Wonder Grove, have it minimized on the screen, and then when the, the moment presents itself, click on it and up comes the cartoon. The kids will immediately attend because they're conditioned to want to be watching cartoons because they're spending 60 hours outside the classroom watching cartoons and only 30 hours inside the classroom. So if you turn on a cartoon, they're going to attend. Now if you turn on a cartoon and the characters slowly and patiently and with love model, so what we set up the problem and then we model the problem and then we correct the problem and then we repeat the answer about line up quietly or don't use your inside voice. We repeat it seven to 12 times. 
Then afterwards, the teacher can stop it and they can plan in advance and print out our extension lessons that align to the Common Core and hand them out to the kids, right? Or put them on the smart board and now extend the lesson, okay? So let's say managing impulsivity. That's a big one. Right. It's really hard for kids when they come back to school after the summer to get back into the classroom routine and manage their impulsivity. Well, managing impulsivity is a lesson that we got from our Dr. Art Costa and Dr. Ben Akalik from the 16 Habits of Mind. So we also have the, our Wonder Grove characters modeling behavior for the 16 Habits of Mind. So, and Art Costa has talked about how he would use them in the classroom. And Dr. Ben Akalik talks about how she uses them in the classroom. So the teachers have those tools. So we'll show you a, like a clip from Managing Impulsivity. You can actually see how we use the characters. And so let's do that. And then afterwards, we can show you um, how Art and Bennett explain it because they, they created it 30 years ago and they've been in this profession for you know 50 years. Um, and they're experts on classroom behavior, which I'm not. Okay, let's take a break and do that. And we'll be right back. Welcome to the Back to School Show. Kids copy cartoons. We want them to copy behaviors to help teachers in the classroom. Today, we will showcase the back to school readiness lesson, Managing Impulsivity. Hey, Maria, you're in my chair. I need you to move. It's not your chair, it's a classroom chair. But I wasn't done with it. I just got up to get another book. We have to take turns, Chris. That's not fair. It's still my turn. But I wasn't done. No, get out of my chair. That's all for today. Stay tuned for another episode of the Back to School Show. Bye-bye. I was in a classroom the other day, and I watched a teacher doing something that was absolutely right on the money. What she did was, first she actually showed the animation of managing impulsivity. Then she had the kids start to think about it and talk about it. Remember a time when we were trying to get in line together and how some kids were cutting in front of other kids? And we really felt like, no, that's not the behavior we want to have. Some kids actually felt hurt that they weren't in the front of the line and we had to rethink how we were going to problem solve. But because she had the animation and the kids saw what it was to actually stop, think, and then act, she suggested, why don't we try that? The next time you feel like you want to cut in line, we'll be able to really say, wait a minute, I'm able to be in control of myself. I can actually manage my impulsivity. And of course, they just love that big language. So now we say to the kids, okay, remember, you want to manage your impulsivity, and the kids respond. And they actually have a kinesthetic way of doing it. Stop think, and then act. Along about 1981, a long time ago, ASCD, the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development, invited me to write a book, to edit a book actually, um, on what is good thinking. And so what I did was to write to leaders in the field of philosophy and psychology and education, and ask them what identified and what described good thinkers, effective thinkers. So I was collecting all of these writings that they sent me. And as I was doing so, I began to see some overlap. They're basically saying the same thing, saying think before you act, think a little bit about what you have before you draw a conclusion. And so I called that the management of impulse, managing impulsivity. In a classroom you have 20, 30 students all at the same time. It, it, it's pretty important then that in order to maintain some sense of order in the classroom, kids have to kind of manage themselves. And so um, what we want is to ki have kids become self-regulating. Kids have to learn how to take turns. They have to learn how to inter in not interrupt people. They have to learn how to respect other people's ideas. And all that means then that they have to manage their own impulses. They have to think about their own feelings and they have to take, take charge of themselves, and they can. To purchase Wondergrove Learn, go to www.wondergrovelearn.net.